it's it, it's it's some weeks since we did the birthday party, but um, th these are two sides of 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 Pinter's writing. Um, the birthday party started with a light, somewhat funny domestic scene in a seedy boarding house. But the characters are wrapped up in a dark mystery. And the sinister, threatening side of the play emerges gradually, although we learn from Stanley, he's offended some powerful force. And we learn this before the arrival of Goldberg and McCann. At that time, Pinter would not have accepted any analysis of what he was trying to do. He left it with the mystery. Mountain Language, which Pinter himself directed at the National Theatre in October 1988, is also an openly political track. An anguished outcry against dictatorship and torture in a totalitarian society. It thus provided further evidence that Pinter had developed into an overt political crusader and activist in his work for the theatre as well as in his public persona as a signatory of Charter 88 and campaigner in other liberal causes. The meaning here is clear, undimensional, and never in the slightest doubt. Torture is obscene. The domination of human beings by other human beings is obscene. Cruelty is obscene. The point is being made with the utmost economy of means in a succession of four fair scenes. We're in a country in which the ruling regime has banned the use of the language of a minority living in the mountains. In the first scene, we meet a group of women waiting outside a prison, wanting to be admitted to see their husbands and sons. An old woman has been savagely bitten in her hand by a guard dog and might be English or American. American and protest about this. Over to Bernard for the introduction to the first scene. Harold Pinter, Mountain Language. One, a prison wall. A line of women, an elderly woman cradling her hand, a basket at her feet, a young woman with her arm round the woman's shoulders. A sergeant enters, followed by an officer. The sergeant points to the young woman. Name. We've given our names. Name. We've given our names. Name. Oh, stop this shit. Any complaints? She's been bitten. Who? Who's been bitten? She has. She has a torn hand. Look, her hand has been bitten. This is blood. What is your name? Oh, shut up. What's happened to your hand? Has someone bitten your hand? The woman slowly lifts her hand. He peers at it. Who did this? Who bit you? A Doberman pincher. Which one? Which one? Sergeant, look at this woman's hand. I think the thumb is going to come off. Who did this? She stares at him. Who did this? A big dog. What was his name? What was his name? Every dog has a name. They answer to their name. They're given a name by their parents, and that is their name. That is their name. Before they bite, they state their name. It is a formal procedure. They state their name, and then they bite. 
What was his name? If you tell me one of our dogs bit this woman without giving his name, I will have that dog shot. Now, attention. Silence and attention. Sergeant? Sir? Take any complaints. Any complaints? Has anyone got any complaints? We were told to be here at nine o'clock this morning. Right. Quite right. Nine o'clock this morning. Absolutely right. What's your complaint? We were here at nine o'clock this morning. It's now five o'clock. We have been standing here for eight hours in the snow. Your men let Doberman pinches frighten us. One bit this woman's hand. What was the name of this dog? She looks at him. I don't know his name. With permission, sir? Go ahead. Your husbands, your sons, your fathers, these men you have been waiting to see are shit houses. They are enemies of the state. They are shit houses. The officer steps towards the women. Now hear this. You are mountain people. You hear me? Your language is dead. It is forbidden. It is not permitted to speak your mountain language in this place. You cannot speak your language to your men. It is not permitted. Do you understand? You may not speak it. It is outlawed. You may only speak the language of the capital. That is the only language permitted in this place. You will be badly punished if you attempt to speak your mountain language in this place. This is a military decree. It is the law. Your language is forbidden. It is dead. No one is allowed to speak your language. Your language no longer exists. Any questions? I do not speak the mountain language. Silence. The officer and sergeant slowly circle her. The sergeant puts his hand on her bottom. What language do you speak? What language do you speak with your ass? These women, Sergeant, have as yet committed no crime. Remember that. Sir, but you're not saying they're without sin. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not saying that. Uh, this one's full of it. She bounces with it. She doesn't speak the mountain language. The woman moves away from the sergeant's hand and turns to face the two men. My name is Sarah Johnson. I have come to see my husband. It is my right. Where is he? Show me your papers. She gives him a piece of paper. He examines it, turns to Sergeant. He doesn't come from the mountains. He's in the wrong batch. So is she. She looks like a fucking intellectual to me. But you said her ass wobbled. Intellectual asses wobble the best. Blackout. Two. Visitor's room. A prisoner sitting. The elderly woman sitting with basket. A guard standing behind her. The prisoner and the woman speak in a strong rural accent. I have bread. 
The guard jabs her with a stick. Forbidden. Language forbidden. She looks at him. He jabs her. It's forbidden. Tell her to speak the language of the capital. She can't speak it. She doesn't speak it. I have apples. The guard jabs her and shouts. Forbidden! 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 Jesus Christ! Does she, she understand what I'm saying? No! Doesn't she? He bends over her. Don't you? She stares up at him. She's old. She doesn't understand. So whose fault is that? Ha <laughs> ha! No, not mine, I can tell you. And I'll tell you another thing. I've got a wife and three kids. And you're a pile of shit! I've got a wife and three kids. You've what? You've got what? What did you say to me? You've got what? You've got what? He picks up the telephone and dials one digit. Sergeant, I'm in the blue room. Yes, I thought I should report, Sergeant. I think I've got a joker here. Lights to half. The figures are still. Voice is over. The baby is waiting for you. Your hand has been bitten. They are all waiting for you. They have bitten my mother's hand. When you come home, there will be such a welcome for you. Everyone is waiting for you. They're all waiting for you. They're all waiting to see you. Lights up. The sergeant comes in. What, Doka? Blackout. Three. Voice in the darkness. Who's that fucking woman? What's that fucking woman doing here? Who let that fucking woman through that fucking door? She's his wife. Lights up a corridor. A hooded man held up by the guard and the sergeant, the young woman of, at a distance from them, staring at them. What is this? A reception for Lady Duckmuck? Ah, where's the bloody baby sham? Who's got the bloody baby sham for Lady Duckmuck? He goes to the young woman. Hello, miss. Sorry. A bit of a breakdown in administration, I'm afraid. They sent you through the wrong door. Unbelievable. Someone will be done for this. Anyway, in the meantime, what can I do for you? Dear lady, <laughs> as they say in the movies. Lights to half, the figures are still. Voice is over. I watch you sleep. And then your eyes open. You look up at me, above you, and smile. You smile. When my eyes open, I see you above me and smile. We are out on a lake. It is spring. I hold you. I warm you. When my eyes open, I see you above me and smile. Lights up, the hooded man collapses. Charlie! The sergeant clicks his fingers, the guard drags the man off. Yes, you've come in the wrong door. It must be the computer. The computer's got a double hernia. But I'll tell you what, 
If you want any information on any aspect of life in this place, we've got a bloke. Comes into the office every Tuesday week, except when it rains. He's right on top of his chosen subject, he is. Give him a tinkle one of these days and he'll see you all right. His name is Dokes. Joseph Dokes. And I fuck him. If I fuck him, will everything be all right? <laughs> sure. No problem. Thank you. Blackout. Four visitors' room. The prisoner has blood on his face. He sits trembling. The woman is still. The guard is looking out of a window. He turns to look at them both. Oh, I forgot to tell you. They've changed the rules. She can speak now. She can speak in her own language until further notice. He can speak? Yes, until further notice. New rules. Mother, you can speak. Mother, I'm speaking to you. You see, we, we, we can speak. You can speak to me in your own language. She is still. You can speak. Mother, can you hear me? I'm speaking to you in our own language. Do you hear me? It's our language. Can't you hear me? Do you hear me? Mother! Tell her she can speak in her own language. New rules, until further notice. Mother! She does not respond, she sits still. The prisoner's trembling grows, he falls from the chair onto his knees, begins to gasp and shake violently. The sergeant walks into the room and studies the prisoner shaking on the floor. Look at this! You go out of your way to give him an helping hand! And I fuck it up. Blackout. Well, we got through it. I'm I'm amazed we actually managed to do that after all the setbacks. It was it felt I like know. it was doomed, doesn't it? Yeah, Edinburgh oh. friends next door. It's good. It was good actually. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, it's a very powerful piece, really. Oh goodness me! Um, it, it certainly is. Uh, sadly, maybe it only act did as a blueprint for all dictators since. It seemed, it seemed very Brechtian to me rather than English. Okay. Yeah. And mm. Ma Martin Eslin agrees with you, Graham. It, it is more Bre Bre Brechtian. He compares it with um, fear and misery of the Third Reich. And I, I don't know if you've come across uh, fear and Mystery of the Third Reich. I'm, I, I directed some scenes from that over in Liverpool um, with a, a drama group over there, you know, when I was with um, Jingle Community Theatre. Uh, the, the, there is some, some dark com comedy in this, in, in, in terms of, we'll shoot the dog if, if, <laughs> if you tell us its name, you know. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, quite, it's quite dark. But it, but it is completely different from the birthday party and the caretaker, isn't it? You know, it's mm. it's, it's gone in a, a much more overtly political way. Bernard mentioned the connection with uh, the, the, the domestic situation, uh, um, uh, you know, and the British stuff. Well, the first one in that period that he wrote was in 84. And if you think about that, that is... Well, at the time, that the miners are being described as the enemy within, you know. So we, 
So, so although obviously I don't want to make um, comparisons with the brutality, and you know, I, I think the reference of this particular play is to do with uh, someone else. Remind me, what's the minority in Tur Turkey aren't able to speak their language? Well, the Kurds, right? I, I, you know, um, so I became uh, more politically active in that period. But um, you, you were all alive then, but you can remember how polarized the society was. You know, we had a national police force. You, you, you could not get across to, 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 to Yorkshire without being stopped by the police. They took the Liverpool and Manchester police over to Yorkshire. So although it isn't comparable in the sense of this direct torture that we've just witnessed in the sense of this play, um, people were being arrested and stopped from traveling across this country by a police force that had been politicized under a Tory government who were desperate to beat the miners, you know. The miners were the underground people rather than the mountain people, weren't they? Yeah. You you have a se several scenes where the 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 guards are following the the um the aesthetic of the overlords uh, regardless yeah. of what their internal feelings might have been. I mean that whole business of a scene where uh, the, the it's clear that at one stage you've been told you can't do a particular thing, and then on another time, as part of the torture, you show you're told, well, you can do what we just told you not to do, and the 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 mental coercion involved in that, and the confusion caused, where yes, you can do that, and you're witnessing someone trying to get someone to speak.